We continue now with our election connection, our coverage of the lead up to the November 19th municipal elections here in BC. Civic politics can be a vicious game in the hurly burly of campaign season. Relations between political reporters and candidates can be uh, strained, but one local blogger is trying to play the game with a whole new set of rules, and our own Jeff Turner has looked into this and joined us now with that story. Hello there. Morning, Rick. So what'd you learn? Well, there's this local blog, it's called thedependent.ca, and the editor is a guy named Matt Chambers, and he was frustrated with the way politics are covered in the city. He thinks it's too cynical, and he wonders if maybe that's contributing to low voter engagement and low turnout, and we've been talking Perhaps, about sure, that on yeah. the program. So we wanted to find out if there's a way to report on a campaign that sort of cut through some of the usual filters. And now keep in mind, Matt has never covered politics before. So how is he doing that? Well, he's, a, I'll just let Matt explain. Well, the intention was to cover politics in a different way, and so we sort of wanted to go out there and get embedded with a single candidate and follow them all the way through. Uh, we are rookies in politics, and so is Mr. Lamar, so the fit was kind of interesting, I thought, and it would give us um, a, a virgin take on municipal politics, if you will. So that's Matt Chambers from The Dependent. Embedded, we've heard that in, in, in war coverage, but <laughs> what does he mean in politics? Well, well, he just wanted to get a more intimate picture of what's involved in a civic campaign. So he decided to choose a candidate and, with permission, follow their every move as closely as possible. So the idea was that he'd just get past the press conference and the stump speech and get to the heart of the matter. So he chose a candidate and he started shadowing him. And that's the Mr. LaMarche that he's referring to there in the clip. That's Jason LaMarche. He's an NPA candidate for council this year. Why choose Jason LaMarche? Well, it was simple. He was the first person to agree to be a part of <laughs> that's the experiment. That's important. <laughs> yeah. So, but it's actually a nice fit. They're both young guys. Jason's 34. That makes him the youngest person on the NPA slate. And he used to be a sponsored skateboarder. So he doesn't exactly fit the, uh, the party image of, the, you know, the image of the NPA as the no. party of the establishment. So they're both young, hip guys. Matt's blog is trying to reach a young alternative audience. So it, it kind of made sense. I can see why journalists would, would want to get this kind of access, but what's in it for the candidate, Jason Lamar? Well, that's what I didn't get either. I, I, I was thinking, like, if I'm a campaign manager, there's no way I'm going to let a journalist get in up close and personal, you know, especially for a rookie candidate like Jason. So I, I put it to Jason. I wondered if he was worried that maybe he might be exposing himself just a little bit too much. We're able to discuss things beyond simple talking points where I can explain why we're doing the things that we're doing. So at the end of the day, these articles, I mean, Matt's a very gifted writer, and he writes these articles on the Dependent Magazine in a way that is just very engaging. And so I'm really happy with the product that's coming out of this. So for Jason, it's like he feels like it's a, a chance to break free of the the campaign script and, and sort of get his a real sense of himself across. So when you say embedded in access, exactly how much access does Matt get here? Well, it, there's only been one installment so far, so it's hard to tell how close he's getting. And there are limits. When when Matt tried to get into an NPA strategy meeting, he was the, uh, the well, door was going to say yeah, <laughs> the door was closed in his face. Um, so, but you notice it in the tone. Matt comes across as a bit of a curious onlooker. He's uh, he doesn't feel quite at home in the media wolf pack. And uh, there's another thing that struck me that comes across. It's that he's got some real empathy for a subject that you don't necessarily see in political reporting. When he called his first press conference, this is his first ever press conference, and I couldn't help but imagine myself calling my first ever press conference and, and sort of wondering, is anybody going to show up? It's like throwing a party and wondering if anybody's going to arrive. Uh, I was nervous. I was nervous for him. When I got his email saying, hey, I'm holding this press conference, are you going to come? I thought, oh dear, I wonder if he's inviting me because he's worried that no one else will be there. And I was wondering, am I going to be the only one there? And of course I'm thinking, oh, that, I mean, I would, I would feel embarrassed for him. As a human being, I would feel embarrassed for him. So, so yeah, certainly there is a, there is a, personal connection when you're spending this much time with somebody and it's and it's absolutely unavoidable but you know isn't there a risk of getting too close to a subject well yeah that's you, you lose your object that's journalism school yeah. 101 yeah. right and there are definitely some ethical perils i decided to ask about this from someone who, who's been very close to a subject remember the film citizen sam i do well you should remember <laughs> it because you're actually in that yeah. film right <laughs> Bit of a snippet um, there. Yeah, that's right. Vancouver filmmaker Joe Mullins, he followed Sam Sullivan through the 2005 civic election campaign, and it was a very intimate portrait. I mean, we saw Sam Sullivan taking a bath. We learned that he likes to take a hit of scotch in the morning to get going. A little breakfast. And we also learned that he's a very tough cookie, and here's a little taste of that. I like the fact that people underestimate me. 
Uh, you know, they tapped me on the head, and then I ripped their throat out. So what sort of effect did that film though, have on Sam Sullivan's political fortunes? Well, it was a slightly different situation, I should mention, because the film came out after the election. Yeah. So it didn't have the direct effect on that campaign. And Sam Sullivan won that election. But the film did make some lasting impressions, and they weren't necessarily flattering. I asked Sam Sullivan if he regrets being a part of that film. I got a lot of feedback about people who made their decisions about who I was as a person based on a few really bad comments made it in a very stressful, you know, part of the campaign. And uh, it formed people's opinions. And uh, so I would say, you know, the unfortunate lesson is for politics, be very private. Uh, you know, be very careful how you present yourself to the public. And I, I regret having to say that. So that's the sound of someone who's been stung by embedded journalism right there. <laughs> what about the risk, though, for journalists? Well, I asked Citizen Sam director Joe Mullins that very question. Your subject has all kinds of reasons for entering, entering into an arrangement like this. I know that Sam, Sam agreed to do this because he thought it could help him, it could help his campaign. Uh, so you know, I, I have no doubt that at times Sam was playing to the camera. Don't assume that because you have such close access to the uh, the candidate that you're you're seeing the candidate as he is when the um, you know when the lights are off or when you're not around. Does Jason Lamarch does he understand the political risk he's taking exposing himself like? Well, that? he's a rookie, but he's not naive, Rick. He's uh, you know he understands how the game is played, and he just told me that he's calculated the odds and he's going for it just the same. Well, in the beginning, that was the exact primary concern, is you're going to work closely with a journalist. That introduces risk because you can't control what journalists write. They're going to say and do whatever they like because that's their job and it's their entitlement and their right. And by doing this, yeah, I'm introducing risk into my campaign. Um, I don't really care because I don't want to approach politics in the same boring standard way. I, I want to turn it on its head. I want to do something differently. So there's Jason Jason LaMarche, candidate for council, sounding pretty bold. And those are the risks and rewards of getting in bed on the campaign trail. So far, it's worked. You got exposure on this program, didn't <laughs> That's you? That's right. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff.